Hey Virgo, it's me Stormy and here is your horoscope for November 2018. And Virgo, before we jump in, the brand new blog is up at stormygrace.com. You can also click a link in the description box to link right over to it. I hope you go check it out. I'm excited to share thoughts, ruminations, and everything else. And what's up there waiting for you right now are the major astrological transits and aspects for November, December, January, and I am working on February, but the rest of 2019 will be there as well. And I did that so that you can take your chart and I give you instructions on how to use your chart and match it up with what I've given you and see where these things are affecting your chart all month long. There's just, we can't be in a thousand hour video talking about every single aspect. So I try to give you a cool little roadmap up on the blog. I hope you check it out. Enjoy it. Love it. Okay. All right. So this month is a month of busy. We've got planets moving, changing direction. Some are coming forward. Some are moving backwards. Some are shifting signs. So it's definitely a movable month. Okay. Now the big ticket items we've got happening this month is that Jupiter, our planet of expansion, is going to be coming on home into the sign of Sagittarius. So he's shifting after 13 months out of Scorpio into Sag. Now for you, this is going to light up the fourth house space, which means your home could be expanding this year. You could be changing. Jupiter is a sign of travel. You could be traveling. Whatever it is, the home zone, security, foundation, that inner security is all going to expand. I'll talk about that in the breakdown. But the thing I am the most excited about is that the North Node of Destiny is going to be moving from the sign of Leo into the sign of Cancer. And why I'm so excited about this is because wherever the North Node of Destiny goes, you will fulfill something, right? It's not a, oh, okay, maybe you'll get these things done. It's a will. You look back 18 months later and you're like, oh my gosh, I did this area of my life absolutely changed or I changed in it. So it's just one of these delicious placements that I get excited about. For you, it's gonna light up the 11th house space. So things with social things, friends, um, long range goals and plans. They're, you're gonna fulfill a destiny here that is gonna be probably a little bit different than the course that you've been on. So I'm really excited to make a separate video about that. Make sure you watch and check it out, okay? As for right now, let's jump in and break the month down. So right at the beginning of the month on the 6th, we've got that north node of destiny moving on over into Cancer, lighting up this 11th house space. Now the thing that I also wanna light up for you is that because that north node is moving over into Cancer, into the the 11th house over here, what we're going to have is the south node over in Capricorn. It's going to be joining Saturn. Now, wherever the south node is at, that's where we're detaching. We're letting go of things, right? Like these won't work anymore. I've got to move on. So I'm going to tell you, there seems to be some idea around something with maybe children or um, just your own individual voice and you're shedding just your own individual voice and it's to join something that is a part of a grouping and while that sounds like why would you want to lose your voice it's not that you lose your voice it's that you understand that your expression has got to meld with something in a grouped way right like you have to be part of not just the one if things are going to move forward so this could change dynamics in your relationships absolutely you know so it's going to be a really interesting time to see what you mature around because Saturn will bring that maturity. The south node will help the detachment and you get to grow up and move to the other side of your chart and blossom. Like I'm so excited about this. Now also on the 6th we've got Uranus who's already retrograde but he's going to move back from Taurus into Aries. Now Uranus has been in Aries for seven years. This is not new information to you. So because he's already moved forward and now he's coming back, what you get to do is review during this retrograde, okay? This is gonna be in your eighth house space. Now, the review that happens here is because he's already been working for seven years in your eighth house, which is group things, not group things, joint things, right? Joint finances, taxes, um, mortgages, sex, intimacy Virgo right you've been deepening in intimacy your identity around what intimacy means I think has definitely taken a shift over the last seven years because you realize it doesn't always go according to plan right um, 
Also things with your partner, right? These things have taken a shift over the last seven years. Now that Uranus is back here on the sixth all the way until March, you get to look at what habits do you have that are still creating too much tension, right? Like what can you still let go of? These last little things that you can let go of. As well, I think it's a beautiful time to say, okay, after the last seven years, how have I changed? How have I intuitively grown? Where have I shifted? Where have I become more friendly? Uranus is a friendly energy, right? So have a nice review um, from now until March. I think it's a great way to see how much progress you've made. Now on the 7th, we've got a new moon happening in the sign of Scorpio. Beautiful. At the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention for something new. The sun and the moon are together. Opportunities are endless right? Anything's possible when the sun and the moon are together. This happens in your third house. So the very first thing that I think about is because it's in Scorpio, this may add depth to your third house, which is conversation, communication, decision making, thinking, business deals come from the third house as well, right? So this is going to bring depth because Scorpio is looking for the truth, right? Scorpio wants a new, true depth in his conversation. He wants truth out on the table. So this could definitely adjust who you're talking to, how you're talking to people, how you're processing information. I think it's a phenomenal energy as well to begin something new and truthful from. But remember at the new moon you plant these seeds of intention and then you have to get out of the way and watch them come forward. I'm getting some information too that some of you may be beginning new contracts of a variety and I wonder if they're connected to work or something like that. Something social, they'll be connected to something social you could be beginning a new contract. All right, on the 8th, we've got Jupiter making that move out of Scorpio into the sign of Sagittarius. Lights up your fourth house because Jupiter doesn't want you to just expand here, right? That's whatever. That's just for you. None of these planets want you to grow just for you, right? The gig is you're growing to offer to the collective, truly, right? So here, Jupiter is helping you expand out and he says, all right. We're gonna take this fourth house zone that's home, family, real estate, property, your inner foundations, your emotional security, your reaction, right? All of these things are going to expand and you're gonna take them out into the world. So you could have somebody new coming into your life. Oh my goodness, maybe those people who are family members or something like that are coming to live with you and it's time to maybe take care of them. Oh my goodness, Virgo beautifully sent some of you could have things going on with your mom or a mothering figure and you spend this next year really having to wrap her in some understanding or in some love or in some support in some way okay that vision is very clear so whoever that is you've definitely got that coming in you're well supported this could also be, you know, maybe someone's leaving your house. You have older children, time to go off to whatever. Maybe you're ready to have children. You could be expanding your home in that way. Maybe you're moving into a bigger home or changing that in some way, shape, or form. You could also see with all of this shift to your identity, your maturity, all of these things that have been happening over the last year slash seven years, <laughs> that your internal foundations are feeling stronger. So you can go out in the world more confidently and do more or do different things. So whatever it is, Jupiter is going to take you on a ride over the next, what, until December 2019 and allow you to expand and show yourself to the world in a different way and have a different experience. So I'm very excited for you. All right, on November 15th, we've got Mars moving into Pisces. Now, Mars is not comfortable here, right? But when a planet shows up in a specific sign, they have to get on board and they have to act like that sign, right? Mars wants to go fast. He wants to run. He wants to do things. He's assertive. He's here to win. And Pisces is a water energy, so they are in absolutely no rush, right? So what Mars in Pisces does for us is gives us an opportunity to slow down. So here in your seventh house, in relationships, in your one-on-one -on -one relationships, is it time to slow down? Is it time to get a different understanding? Is it time to look at and nurture those things, right? You know, and Mars in Pisces is also an energy that is kind of, it's kind of unclear. You maybe can't see everything as clearly. So in your relationships, you may also find that you feel a little bit on pause because you don't know exactly what you want. One of the things I think here too, in terms of action, Virgo is you with you. What's this new relationship of you with you 
because it's impacting your one-on-one -on -one relationships, right? And that's not necessarily bad. It might just be a nice time to slow down and review how you're showing up in these one-on-one -on -one relationships. This could also, in a nice, slower way, I think bring um, an intuitive partnership your way. So I think that's really gorgeous. Now, on the 16th, we've got a lot happening. Venus is coming out of retrograde, which I know I'm excited about, okay? It's coming out of retrograde in the sign of Libra, which is going to impact your second house. So Venus direct here in Libra now. You maybe have some new opportunities for um, money making or taking a skill out there into the world and being able to make money with it. But it's also about self-esteem. This is about self-esteem and because it's Libra, it's in partnerships, right? So again, we've got this partnership thing. Again, we've got this thing where you're joining. It's not just you, Virgo. There has to be a joining. So I think that this is a beautiful place for it to come out of retrograde in because Venus is also about money. She likes making money. She likes value. Her thing is value, romance. So Venus coming direct here could actually show you as well in your romantic relationships, maybe there's a different level of value here and it's beautiful and it's diplomatic, maybe some new sensuality on the table. Whatever it is, I'm wishing you all the delicious Venus you can handle. I sure am, okay? Also on that same day, we've got your ruling planet, Mercury taking a retrograde and this is going to be in the sign of Sagittarius as well. So this lights up the fourth house. Now here's the beauty, okay? Jupiter comes, moves into Sagittarius, expanding, saying, yes, we're going to go out. We're going to expand this fourth house space. It's so good, right? And Mercury's like, okay, yeah, I'm totally down. Let's make decisions here. Let's do this. But first, I need to look around and see what's what. I have some questions, right? I have some questions. Because think about that. You walk into a new house or you walk into a new space and you're looking around it. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It's so great. It's so exciting. But it's like, oh, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, what's this? What's this? And that's what Mercury helps us do here is identify what maybe needs to be adjusted. So with Mercury retrograde here in the fourth house, what needs to be adjusted in your communication, decision making, learning in your fourth house space, right? Okay, let's say you end up taking care of a parent or you end up having someone come into your house or you end up having someone go out of your house. You maybe have to relearn what happens in your house, right? So whatever it is, this Mercury energy is going to give you a beautiful time while we've had one of our biggest benefic planet come into this fourth house and expand. It's going to give you a chance to review so that you know what show you're taking on the road, okay? Now, as we get to the 22nd, the sun is going to enter into Sagittarius. So again, the fourth house is where you're going to have some focus. There's some resetting happening here. And there's also just some information gathering right now. Now, during a Mercury retrograde, let me tell you, no one is exempt from Mercury retrograde. Everybody's going to be flipped backwards. So what I would tell you is please have grace with each other. Everybody is facing backwards. Communication can be a wreck. You could definitely have some communication issues in your home, fa family, property, real estate zone, right? And it could just be miscommunications, but it could also be someone rethinking a decision in this particular area. So just try and have grace with people, okay? All right, on the 23rd, we have got a full moon happening in the sign of Gemini, lighting up the top of your chart up here, okay? So the full moon says something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're going to have a shift in the career thing happening here. Now, this is in Gemini energy, so it could be a very social switch at the top of your chart, right? Like maybe there's a project that's ending, maybe there's... Um, something could be ending or a project needs adjustment or maybe you're now in charge of communicating with a specific group of people or something like that but it's a very social intellectual moving energy so you could certainly are some people going to have careers end I don't know if you have your full career in, you could lose a job, you could lose a whatever. These things can end. I tell you what, whenever there is a full moon anywhere near my career house, things dry up for four weeks. They just dry up for four weeks. So you could see that. But at that shift as well, this could just as easily be a promotion or just some kind of change that is of ultimate interest, curiosity, and maybe even benefit to you, okay? On the 24th, we've got Neptune coming out of retrograde, and this is going to be in Pisces, so just across the street in your seventh house space. Now, when Neptune is retrograde, things are not exactly clear. It's like you can see the vision, you can see it, I feel it, something's coming, what's happening. There's just this, 
yummy intuitiveness that's happening, but things are not necessarily clear. So what happens when Neptune comes direct is that the dream, the vision, the hope, the fantasy can be made concrete. Right? It can start to take a realis, realistic, a realistic form. So this is a beautiful time now. Neptune hasn't had this kind of solid energy to offer since about June. So this is a time where some dreams can become realities, especially in your relationships. This is the seventh house zone. So compassion is also key here. Um, forgiveness spirituality, intuitiveness, all of these things are going to come to the table in your relationships. And the reality of bringing those to the table, I think, is going to shift your relationships and kind of get you back on course or see what needs to shake out, shake off, and break apart, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to catching up with you in the December video. I hope to see you on the blog, visiting there, and in all of the spaces in between. I love you guys so much. I'll see you next month. Bye.